journey back through time with me because I think it's a lot more interesting and useful in studying economics, especially macroeconomics, to get an historical view on things. If you know your history, explanation, uh, sorry, economics throws a lot of light, a lot of explanation into why certain events occurred. I want to take you back for a little while to the time before the Industrial Revolution. You know, we, we always say the Industrial Revolution started somewhere around 1750 give or take 20, 30 years, 50 years, right? Certainly by 1800, it's in, in pretty full swing. Well, what was going on prior to the middle of the 18th century, 1750? What was going on in the early 1700s, the 1600s, the 1500s, okay? Well, and again, we're, we're doing this from a, a view of history from the Western mind, that is from the, uh, the changes that occurred in Europe primarily and how those translated into North America. During that time, man was beginning the exploration of the planet. Uh, the story we learn in grammar school in the United States is a story of Christopher Columbus. Undoubtedly, we don't learn it all. But we are told about this explorer who comes to the New World, actually down in the Caribbean, looking for a path around the, the globe to India. And he finds these islands, and then subsequent explorers find the mainland, North America itself. Uh, the natives who dwell there are thought to be Indians, and so we, pick, we, we give them that name, however mistakenly. But here's what's going on. There are explorers from Western European countries going all over the world, and they're finding new lands. And the countries from where they're coming from, Netherlands, Great Britain, France, they're seeing Spain, they're seeing that in these new territories is the potential for, for wealth. Wealth in the way particularly, they hope, of discovering gold and silver to either be mined or taken, but they also find spices and new plants and new animals that as they import them tend to raise their quality of life. So in this period, prior to the Industrial Revolution, the focus, the economic fo focus of the developed nations of the time is to explore, to conquer, and to colonialize various parts of the world. And in doing so, they hope to bring more gold and silver into their countries, to further strengthen their armies and their navies, to further allow them to expand and colonialize. Now, given that mindset and that set of goals, how does that affect their relationship with other countries? And the answer is found in a term called mercantilism. Okay? This is sort of the economics behind what they were doing. Mercantilism. It's not difficult, okay? Look at it this way. Let's take as an example. Here's France. And here's England. And we know that they have warred with each other repeatedly over time, but as the new territories are developed, they're fighting with each other in those territories, about those territories, to maintain influence and to be able to exploit the resources from those developed colonies, if you will. But in the meantime, when they're not shooting guns at each other, they are still trading with each other. And how are they trading? And what we see is, for example, France. France happens to produce some of the finest wines in the world. And so they are able to export wine to England because English wine is not comparable, not as desirable. And of course, in return for that, England sends France gold. What's that gold going to be used for? Well, again, to build up your armies and your navies and to further explore, colonialize, and exploit the world. How's that? But the English see that in this trade, while they may be enjoying the best wine in the world, they're depleting their treasury and they're depleting their ability to maintain their armed forces, their, their colonial activities, their imperialist activities, if you like. In the meantime... England produces 
some excellent textiles, fabrics, etc. Better than what they can produce in France, better technology, whatever. And so France buys those in return for which they send gold. And in an ideal world without conflict, you've got a kind of a circular flow here, right? England is enjoying good textiles that they make and great wine that they import. France is enjoying good wine that they, they produce and importing great quality textiles for the clothing. Everybody should be happy except for that gold issue. And so, for example, the French turn around and see this and say, listen, what we've got to do is we've got to reduce the amount of gold going out of our treasury. So we need to reduce our citizens' consumption of English textiles or other English exports. So what will we do? We will impose a tax on English textiles. We'll tax them, make their price rise, and our people won't buy as many of them. And that way, we'll have less gold going out, but we'll still have our gold coming in from our wine sales, our wine exports. A tax on imports called a tariff. Well, if you were English, what would you be thinking about that situation? You, know, you got to get hit in the face with a wet mop? No, you look at that and say, now wait. If you're going to tax our textiles when we send them to you, by golly, we're going to tax your wine when it comes to us. So our people won't be buying so much French wine. That'll teach you. And so what happens? They get into a trade war. Each one trying to punish the other. Each one trying to maximize their goal. But what happens as a result of this? Trade overall diminishes, and the quality of life in both countries suffers. But that was not what they were thinking about. They said the wealth of our nation comes from the amount of gold that we have in our coffers, in our treasuries. And it, that is the key to our ability to grow and expand. And so you had numerous trade wars as well as shooting wars throughout the time. In 1776, that began to change with the publication of a book called An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. And so we want to take a look at what did Adam say about this system of mercantilism and its effect on the wealth of countries? And we'll do that next.